attempting to acquire the Hellpriest signal. Nearly 60% of our planet has been consumed by the invaders. We have the Hellpriest signal locked in. The target is marked, but the signal will not hold for long. Who is this that they fear? Not man! For his army, they fear the mark of the beast. My feelings about Doom Eternal are complicated, and they've evolved over my course of playing the game. Doom 2016 was one of my favorite games of that year, as it took a lot of risks, all of which I thought paid off. Compared to Doom 3, the combat was switched to a much more pure action style, but it did so in a way that was more cerebral than any of the other games I'd played in the series. This combat system was built around glory kills, grotesque kills in the vein of something you might see in Mortal Kombat. These kills were comically shocking, and they built into the gameplay loop perfectly. You could kill demons from afar, but the only reliable way to regain health was to get up close and personal with the bad guys and pull off those glory kills to absorb the health that spewed from their decimated corpses. This made you constantly run into the fray rather than taking pot shots from across the battle arenas. It was a clever way to get you to play the game the way the developers intended. The other part of the game that made it stand out was how it handled the story. There was a great moment in the first few minutes of the game where exposition was happening on a computer screen, and the Doom Slayer just throws the screen away and moves on. Why are the demons here? What are their motivations? What's the plan? None of that really matters. There are demons, and this guy came to kill all of them. Doom 16 was a masterful game that brought the series back to the forefront of gamers' minds. It had laser-like focus on a few elements, and it was able to explore those to their fullest. If there's anything bad to say about the game, it's that it goes on for maybe an hour or two longer than it needed to, but that's really the slightest of complaints. Doom Eternal comes four years after that amazing return to form, and if I could describe this game in one word, it would be more. There's more of everything in this game, for better and for worse. Pretty much everything from the last game returns here, including glory kills, the awesome soundtrack, most of the same arsenal, and the same hellish art style. The only real omissions in this game are a starting pistol and the crouch maneuver. Instead of a weak pistol to start the game, you start with a shotgun, and the arsenal only gets more intense from there. Meanwhile, the crouch is gone, as this game is not one that is meant to have you kind of slowly lurk through the shadows. It's all about speed. So what do I mean by more of everything? Well, it starts surprisingly with the story. Doom 2016 proudly had no substantial story to follow, and... The bits here and there could be skipped over if you wanted, but Doom Eternal has way more cutscenes and in-game play story bits that the game really wants you to pay attention to and care about. Outside of the intro cinematic, which is really awesome, I found myself zoning out during most of these story bits in the game. There's something about priests who need to be killed or something, but it's not something that drew me in any more than the instinctive need to, you know, just kill demons. <laughs> Here's a clip from Hugo Martin talking about Doom 2016. We're saying something to the audience. We're literally like handing them a ticket for a train ride. We're like, are you ready to go? Because like we're go we're gonna leave right now. You know, like we're not we just forget it. Like you know they're demons. I know they're demons. We both want to shoot them in the face. Let's just go. You know, and that's cool. And then when the guy comes in, you know, delivery, the exposition, the rules. You know, like let's talk. I'm gonna give you orders, and you're gonna go push buttons. And he just throws it away. You know, and. We purposely wrote that in a way that like right at the moment that the audience is like, ah, oh, fuck this guy. And then Doom Marine's just like, Whoosh! and you're just like, nice, I was thinking the same thing. And that's really it. We're all bought in. The Doom Slayer doesn't need any specific motivation to kill as many demons as possible. The story isn't necessarily bad. It's just not what I came here for. And I think that they played this up too much for the sequel. But let's talk about the combat, which is really what we're all here for. In Doom 2016, there were basically five things you did. You shot enemies with the widest assortment of guns, each with an alternate fire mode, 
you threw the occasional grenade, you performed glory kills for health, you used the chainsaw to get ammo, and you double jumped to perform some light platforming. With the exception of grenades, all of that is back in Doom Eternal, plus a whole lot more. You now also get a dash move that lets you zip about 20 feet in any direction, both on land and in the air. You can swing off poles scattered throughout the world to extend your jumps and chain them together. You can grab onto walls and climb them. Grenades are replaced with a shoulder-mounted grenade launcher that you can also use to shoot ice grenades. You now have a flamethrower that sets enemies on fire and makes them start dropping armor as they burn. You can perform glory kills just like before, but now you have a blade that makes these extra gruesome. You can also choose to perform your glory kill when the enemy is flashing blue or orange. Blue is the same as the last time, but if you do it while they're flashing orange, you get health and ammo. The chainsaw now makes enemies drop more than just ammo, they also drop health and armor, and it automatically refills itself, giving you more opportunities to use it. All of this is augmented by a more elaborate upgrade system, multiple upgrade systems actually, that make many more customization options for kitting out your Doom Slayer. This all adds up to a combat system that is more complicated than anything in the previous game. You just have so many options for movement and combat that it gets pretty overwhelming sometimes. I had lots of instances, especially early in the game, where I was in an intense firefight and I was frantically pressing what felt like random buttons just to try to survive. Um, how do I shoot a grenade? How do I turn on the flamethrower? Like, there's so many things you can do, you, you really get lost in figuring out what to do at any moment. Adding to this complexity is the ammo supply in the game. Ammo is noticeably more limited than in the last game, and while you could pick one or two favorite guns in that one and get along pretty well, Doom Eternal makes it essential that you bounce between every gun in your arsenal, because you're not going to have nearly enough firepower with any one gun to do it all. I ran out of ammo on all of my guns, more in this game than any horror game I've played in years, and I really wasn't expecting that. And finally, there are enemies which feel more aggressive in this game, and who are each built to be fought with specific weapons. You can blow off certain parts of the demons, and they all have weak points that can be exploited by certain guns much better than others. If you wanted to fight everyone in the last game with the combat shotgun, you probably could do that, but the limited ammo and different enemy weaknesses make that not an option in Doom Eternal. So while this was problematic for me in the first half of the game, you do eventually get better and understand what tools to use when. And when you're in a battle arena and there are tons of different demons attacking you from all sides, and you're cycling between weapons, zipping and swinging from room to room, and you're using your accessories effectively, you feel incredibly powerful. This isn't like any other mainstream shooter in 2020, and it's its own beast, and it's truly magical when those things all come together. Doom Eternal is an amazing game, and the team over at id achieved something incredible with the sequel. It's an achievement in gaming, and while I don't love the story, nor did I love the environments quite as much as the last one, I really like deserted space stations, it's hard to argue with what we have in this title. Doom Eternal lacks the surprise of the last game. We all knew this game was probably going to be great, so the fact that it was great only met our expectations. Doom 2016 was great, but people were really, really worried at the time that this was going to be a dud, so the initial hype was much greater for that game. I feel like I'm too close to this game right now to know how I feel about it compared to Doom 2016. Do I like it more? Do I like it less? I'm not sure. But it definitely had me on the edge of my seat for all the non-story bits, and it will be in the conversation at the end of the year for my game of the year. <laughs>